recording the screen? Let's start. Five two. We good? Let's see if we can get through this here. Five two. Just the title to it is all I need. I believe it's the sum and difference formula for trig functions here. So sum and difference formulas underneath the fun little thing there. Okay. So let's go for it here. With pencil open, all the good stuff here. Or Pencil. Writing utensil ready for uh, use. Um, let's go with it here. This was the question up on the board before class started. So we had this little question here. Uh, sine of a plus b, is that the same thing as sine of a plus sine of b? Or if you wanted cosine, if your preference is cosine instead of sine. Uh, is this true? So is it uh, the trig function? Do you just kind of distribute it among the angles? And so Georgia was the first one to come up and said, you know what? It's interesting. That's not true. So sine of 30 plus 60 would be 90. Is that correct? Uh, so sine of 30 plus sine of nine, uh, 60. And tell me what you guys got here. This would be 1. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Sine of 30? The second part is, well, the second part of the whole thing is like 1.366. Oh, God, okay, you just grabbed off the calculator here. Let's see. Just real quick here. Uh, if we go 30 degrees up, the sine value is just a little bit high, so that I bet you that's one half. 60 degrees is all the way over here, so the sine value is over 3 over 2. And Georgia, just out of curiosity, or anybody else here, punch that in the calculator. 1 plus square root of 3, click enter. Once you've clicked enter, divide by 2. And let's see if you get the same thing that Georgia got earlier by just plugging in sine 30 plus sine 60. Yeah, I got 1.36. 1.36? Georgia, 1.36? Awesome. Okay. But here's my little problem. That's not true, right? And, and that's not correct. So, bummer. So, this trig function does not just distribute over the angle measurements. Georgia had another question. Um, or a comment. These guys are both the same. Anybody know why these guys are both the same? So sine of 30 plus sine of 60 is the same thing as cosine of 60 plus cosine of 30. Anybody can give me that? I could see Jeopardy. Da, da, da. Yeah, it's like two different angles, you're just taking the other coordinates. So since they're the same thing, they're flipped. Also, like, I would agree. I heard a. <laughs> that is what he said. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> cosine and sine are complementary, right? That's the whole point of saying co. It's the complementary of sine. Mm -hmm. um, so this 30 is the same thing as this 60. And the 60 is the same thing as the 30. That's the whole point of complementary. Right. Co-functions. Say again? Right. Co-functions and all that. The co-function theorem. All right. Awesome. We even named it. That's so cool. OK. Um, I think we're good now. OK, so go on this guy here. Boom. Question is this. Are these two triangles congruent? So think about it as I check my video. Still good. This is fun. I think it's so interesting how human beings have sort of played with it and thought about stuff. I think it was Euclid. Was it Euclid? Some mathematician. No, further on in history. Um, he was uh, born squaggly with a little kid, right? So uh, they did, the parents didn't want him to go into, no, it had to be accompanying. Um, they didn't want him to play with the other kids because thought he was going to get hurt because he was just so scrawny. So uh, he spent his time in the his dad's library. And so after about, not that he was there all the time, but you know, after three years or so, <laughs> here's food under the door. Yeah, he <laughs> he's locked in a library. <laughs> uh, he developed um, Euclid's geometry, pretty much 80% of it. 
and he called circles to be rounds, and he called uh, lines to be straights. And from that, he actually developed a whole system of geometry that's there. I thought that was cool. OK, you guys talk to me here. We've had geometry before, hopefully. Did you guys have geometry? We had our tax geometry. We have geometry credit. We were yeah. <laughs> 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 another question was whether we learned yeah. Also, okay. Okay, so uh, I'll give you a guess. Uh, we're all in a circle. So that's at least a little something. Oh. Matthias, did you have sorry, did you have something? I did have a question. Yeah, sure. For a triangle to be congruent. Oh, no, wait, I just remember the ASA, ASS. Uh huh, that's right, yeah, that's right. Uh, <laughs> that's not one. <laughs> uh, I forgot the ASS. We were <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's <laughs> time. All but that one. Yeah. That one, that one. Uh, side, side, side is another one here. Okay. Yeah. I was going to ask if, if like, it yeah. only needed two sides to be congruent. I know. Oh, those guys. Sass. Alpha. <laughs> 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 Is it side side angle angle? I think it's there's yeah, that one. Alright, we're only in a circle. So let me help you out. Um, that whole thing there is just one away, right? Just one away? Wait, what do you mean by that? Meaning from here to here, there's it's oh. one unit away, correct? That's cool. I like that. Well, if, well then, yeah. So yeah. sine A plus B and sine A plus B are the same, then do we know from that axis, is it 45 degrees? Uh-uh, we don't know the 45 degrees. It's just labeled just A, uh, B, A, and B. That's, that's all we have. Well, yeah, but I'm saying if those two points are equal to each other, like we just saw with the equation, right? Say again, say again. So cosine A plus B and sine A plus B are equal to each other, right? Uh, it's one single point here, yeah. But these two values are not equal, right? Because this is generic angles, right? It's just A plus B, whatever A plus B is. Yeah, but if A and B are the same, like uh, if they're constant values. But even that, like sine like 90, cosine 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90. Yeah, A could be one value, B could be another, right? 15 and 25. Mm -hmm. Right? So this is 45. Let's say it was 50 here, 50 here, right? One was 35, one is 15. Yeah. So did we not just prove that those, as long as those values are equal to each other, the those points will be the same? Is but, that not what oh no, did? that's only with sine yeah. a plus sine b equals cosine a plus cosine b. Oh that's right, 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 right. Yeah. And if they are complementary angles too, mm -hmm. right, they have to add a sign. Okay. All right. Help me out here. Uh, that guy right here isn't that um, one. one. That guy here is not one. That's one. That's one. All these angles. Not the red line and not the purple line. I can't figure out that one yet, but I so at least I know it's that. Congruent because they have got the angles A and B and A and B. One square plus one square. Does that make sense? Like the center angle for one triangle, that angle is angle A plus angle B. And for the other one, it's angle A plus angle B. Oh, I think we're getting somewhere. Let's see. Uh, this is uh, P1, 0, P3, right? It's this angle here. Mm -hmm. And the angle measurement is A plus B. Everybody agree? Mm -hmm. OK. Uh, for 4, P2, O, P, oh, this one here too. It goes this way, actually. P4 is this. Uh, the angle measurement is A plus B. A plus B. Hold on. So if we were to do this right here, that whole thing is A plus B. And then here to here, mm -hmm. that whole thing is A plus B. Or greed or a So disagree. even though it's a negative B, it still is the, the amount of B. Yeah, because remember in trigonometry, we uh, we tend to look at negative angles, right? In geometry, everything's a right, everything's a positive angle. So it's because side angle side. Side angle side. Awesome. Sass. Sass it is. So sad, so suspicious. Okay. <laughs> so I got this triangle, right? We're gonna move it around and we're gonna put it like this. Everybody agree? Mm -hmm. Boom. 
like that, right? It's this corner here moving to P1 going to P4, right? So it's twisted. And P3 is then positioned on P2. So does that mean that it needs a flip? It does do a flip as far as um, as far as congruency goes, right? So Wait, but P3 wouldn't go to P4? Because then wouldn't the angles not be that? Yeah. Yeah, because if the triangle is in a triangle facing the wrong way, if you just rotate it, does it also need to be? Okay. So like, just like if P one went to P four, it would be face that triangle would be facing the opposite uh -huh. way. Yeah, P three would be like in the other on the other side of the circle. Yeah, and then the angle would be like it looked like a little diamond. Maybe. What you're saying is like flip it like a Were you saying yeah, that, that P1 thing. is supposed to be on P4 and P2 and P3 would be on P2? Yeah. The reason for it is because angle A, see how angle A is in here? Uh -huh. So when you flip angle A, angle B is going to fall right on top. We want angle B to fall right on top of each other. Okay? Are we good there? Um, can you draw it on? Yeah, you just like flip it like a TV. Uh -huh, so you can do go like that and then like flip it that way, right? Yeah. So then we have uh, <laughs> angle A is here, P2, and P4. Are oh, we good there? And that's angle B. Yeah. On this one here, angle B is towards the top, right? Yeah. So if we flip it around like this, we slide it over, then you get. Then you get uh, let's see, this guy comes out the bottom. So we've got P1 here, P3. Then we have angle A sitting on top of angle A. Oh. And then right here's B. I get it. It's like it's like it's a 3D object, and you're like flipping it over like a you literally. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, no, 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 no. I keep thinking. I don't remember doing it like using 3D in geometry. I just remember like spinning it in a circle. Mm. Yeah. No, yeah. No, we definitely flip. Yeah, we're both. Maybe we're not getting it. We're not getting it, but I don't remember what it was. Uh-huh. Okay. I don't remember why. Yeah, mirror. I remember doing it. Ah, okay, that idea. So let's do this here. Yeah. Um, I'm going to. Mirror. We're going to have. That works too. Same thing. I mean, that's what I'm going to do. Let's back up a little bit here. So this little piece right here. And this little piece right here, because we established congruency, talk to me, are those should be the same. And so, if those should be the same, that means their distances have to be the same, true? Uh -huh. yeah. So that means, if that's true, that means, you know what, a distance, it doesn't matter which way you go, right? Distance could go from here to here to here to here, right? Doesn't matter? Distance is still going to be the same? And someone's calling. All right, so talk to me, see if this makes sense. That means, since I know it doesn't matter which direction we go here, so P1 to P3, oh, distance formula, that's right, distance formula is the square root of, let's see, uh, x2 minus x1, is that right? y2 minus y1, true, what do you guys agree, disagree? Is it not minus? Is it minus? It is minus. It is minus, right? Because you're trying to get the distance, like from four to six. The yeah, distance but, would be two. So, but you're still adding the two values. Uh, after you uh, after you square them, then you add okay. the two values together to give you one and two on both sides. Okay. So let's do this here. So, uh, so that means P1, P3. And I'm going to cheat a little bit of that, okay? Because distance could go any direction here. I'm going to say <laughs> right now, baby. <maybe. laughs> hey, instead of doing a square root as well, so what we're going to do, we're just going to do this right here. We're going to take and we're going to square this side and we're going to leave this alone. Is that okay? We can square because it's just a form at that point. All right, I think we got the long trail ahead of us, really. Because we have reciprocal identities, ratio identities, and Pythagorean theorem identity is established, right? That, that's cool, right? Chapter five is let's get some more. And this is the more difficult one. After we do this, then we get our solver equations. All right, think with me though. Uh, 
Um, this side here. Okay, let's start with cosine. Um, here to here. And if this makes sense, it, this, this is my x coordinate, right? Subtracting my other x coordinate, squared plus. What's my y coordinate? Huh. This is my y coordinate going to be. Brian, do you guys agree there? And that's uh, difference by between my x squared, difference between my y squared. Are we good? Talk to me. Just making sure everybody head head's bowing or like yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. This guy's I'm thinking it is um, to the co the x coordinates those work and you know what I hate the negative angles can we do this talk to me cosine of b is that all right what's the other coordinate going to be Absolutely, because uh, one's an even function, one is an odd function. Okay, that's cool. I can live with that. So uh, we can get rid of these parentheses. There'll be too many parentheses at the end, anyways. Okay, so let's go with it here. So the other side, this side is going to be cosine of a minus cosine of b squared plus. This is my x's subtracting each other and sine of a plus a negative. Will we put a plus sign in there already? I think so. Sine a subtract a negative sine b would be this right here. Are we good? The rest is just a little bit of pre-algebra. Okay. Can I wipe all this now? I'm going to erase this. Is that okay? Eventually, we just need to get this formula. So now the question is, Mr. MGF, are you going to require this for us to redo this on an exam? No, just kidding. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> then don't erase it. <laughs> okay, but we do need to know how to use the formula. So it's almost eight. That's all right. Okay, let's go quickly here. Let's put this together, and you guys have to help me out. Let me rewrite this. And let's see, from algebra. You guys remember from algebra? You guys um, set it out. Expand that out for me really real quick. X minus y to the second power is? Uh, x squared minus 2xy plus x squared. Or y squared. OK, boom. Everybody, everybody agree with that little thing from algebra? Cool, let's go for it here. Let's see if we can make all that happened over here. So I'm going to square this out. This is going to give me cosine squared a plus b minus 2 This is, I like zeros. I totally love zeros. That goes away. We're just squaring sine. So I got myself that right there. Uh, this one squared out would be, let me write it underneath here, so we can finally get this would be cosine squared a minus 2 cosine a. Cosine b 
plus cosine t squared plus this guy. We're getting somewhere, maybe. Thinking like a mathematician. This is cool. Here's one for me. If I have to write something down, it's harder for me to process it until I write it down and then read it over. Gotcha, over okay. Give you some time. time. this guy here. Okay. Uh, so this part to here is that. The sine we get that is zero in it, that's just sine squared. And then this piece comes from expanding here. And this piece comes from expanding here. Oh, so here. that, the, the longest one equals the sum of the two others. Like, let me rewrite because it was written on that side here. So part of write that again here, the cosine a plus b on top. So like what you're saying is like that the two pieces that are like the cosine squared a minus that part and then plus sine squared a that part, those are equal to the whole top one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so let's see, this this came from here. Okay. This came from here, and that came from there. Does that help? Yeah. Okay. All right. Anybody help me out? We gotta figure this out. Anything cancel? Oh, let's do that. Does anything cancel here? So, granted, if I could, right, I would write this as one giant one yeah. line, right? One yeah. line across. Um, Hold to the next line I could. Not a whiteboard okay. space. Oh, yeah. For the first one, could you substitute cosine, or like on the left side, cosine squared a plus b and sine squared a plus b to be one? Oh, yes, that's cool. Okay, so I thought something here that this you agree with. I mean, are those guys are just going to be one? Yeah. That's just going to be Pythagorean theorem anyway? Sweet, that goes away, that's just one. Oh, I got another one over here. That's two, two minus two, cosine of a plus b, okay. I like that, that's a good step forward. Okay, so I got the left side simplified. How about the right side, the other side with equal sign? I mean, I think we can do the same thing, but with cosine squared a plus b and then sine squared a, and then sine squared b. He thinks, yeah. Let's see. So, I may have saying that these two pieces right here, that good, that's going to become a one. And these two pieces that's in here, that's going to become a one as well. Everybody agree there? That's one and one, or two if you like, right? Then we have minus two cosine of a cosine of b plus two 
sine A, sine B, and I finally wrote it as one big piece. Okay, this is good. Let me simplify just a little bit more here. So that, I don't like that. So 2 minus 2 cosine of A plus B. That's going to be 2 minus 2 cosine of A cosine of B plus 2 sine A sine B. Okay, talk to me. What else can we do? solving Ptolemy's uh, formula that took him like three months to do on a Monday morning. <laughs> no biggie. Pull out a two. Um, that's cool. I'm thinking uh, kind of like that. Can we just subtract two here? Can I subtract two here? Oh, wait. So we're solving, not proving? We are. We could solve. We are just simplifying as much as we can. Okay. The part of the simplification is you can get rid of constants on both sides. Um, we're not proving an identity, we're just simplifying. So that goes away, that goes away. I'm left with negative 2 cosine of a plus b is equal to negative 2 cosine a cosine b plus 2 sine a sine b. Are we good? Well, that's good. And I guess it, we're pretty close to just solving for the cosine of a plus b. I'm going to solve for this guy because this is just right there sitting waiting for me. Divide by negative 2. Divide by negative 2 would be just fine. Yeah, or you could just string one big giant negative two across, right? Okay. Or you could do it individually. So I got it. Cosine of a plus b is cross those off. I got cosine of a, cosine of b minus. Oh, that's so funny. It has. Love it. Write this down and bracket it. Do something. We are just super awesome because we just figured out the addition formula for cosine. What is it called? Uh, so it's the sum. Let's see how your book calls it here. Sum or addition. Sum looks like it. Yeah. yeah, sum formula for cosine. Like S U M sum. <laughs> some random form. Okay. Some random form of cosine. Okay. Guys, this is cool. I say this is awesome. We just kind of redid a person's work for a long time. Um, next step. Next step. Next step. So, uh, I'm going to give you the hint. Cosine is an even function. Can you give me the difference formula for cosine? Good. So I need the difference formula for cosine. I need you guys to develop this formula here. Cosine of A minus B. Based upon the fact that cosine is an even function. Good. I'm just going to write that in there. So there's a sum formula. Give me the distance formula with a little bit of thinking. Um, should I give you the next hint? Let me give you the next hint. The next hint is uh, A minus B. Could I, could I do the same thing as uh, A plus negative B? Does that mean the same thing? Yeah. A minus B is the same thing as A plus a negative B. Okay, there it is. There's that. And the fact that it comes the even function, I'll let you guys try that while I erase the board. We're good? And I'll come by and see if anybody got it.
up here. So sum Let me walk around over here to see how you guys are doing it, how you're managing it. Something about a negative V angle in my mind. Easy enough. Okay, so that's one and two. Here. Gotcha. So congratulations to the three people that got it. That's so cool. No problem. Those that didn't get it, you're not less smart. Just didn't put it together here. That's okay. True. A minus B is A plus negative B. Let's put it into the, hey, that's a summation formula now. Is that the same thing as this now? With a negative b inside it instead of positive b. Let's plug it in. Cosine of a, cosine of negative b, minus sine of a, sine of negative b. That's it. So from here on out, we're going to try to get. Once we've established this formula, this is awesome. Because then we're going to use this one to get everything else. Because okay. that's the whole point. Once you establish something, you start building this humongous thing called identities. So, um, cosine is a even function, love it, that's gonna drop out. Sine is an odd function. So this guy becomes negative sine of positive b. And eventually, how about a cosine of a, cosine of b, plus sine of a, sine of b, agreed? Awesome. Here's our next formula, so cosine of A, cosine of B plus, so it's really just a sign change. Sign change in a specific place in the formula because of the even and odd distribution. Okay, talk to me, was that pretty cool that we established something that did not exist before? Not see before, I did. Nods from like three people that are awake. That's cool. <laughs> okay, so let's go on to exercise one. Awaken up. Awaken up. That's all I need. So find me the exact value. So the exact value of cosine of 15 degrees. Wait, hold on. So remember, up until this point, we can only get um, 
multiples of 30, right? 30, 45, 60, 90, 120, 135, is that right? 135, 150, 180, right? Up until this class, up until today, those are the only angles we can get exact values for. Right? <clears throat> so I want the exact value for cosine of 15 degrees now. So we've expanded our little arsenal of which angles we know to be the exact values for. So in the Greeks, because they didn't have calculators that you could punch in cosine of 35 degrees, ha ha ha, and you click enter and you get it. They had to rely on this stuff. And so that's what we're sort of seeing here. So now the question is, which angles can I know, which angles can I don't know, and how far can I get? All right, goes at 15 degrees. Talk to me. Anybody have an idea? Jeopardy, here we go. Da, 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 da. Da, da, da. Uh, would it be like cosine of 45 minus 30? Dude, that sounds cool. Yeah. Now, how do you get 15 degrees? 15 degrees can be formed by 45 degrees minus 30. We're going to use this guy. We're going to use the distance form of that. Oh, hold on. So then is that is that something called unique, which means is there any other pair that you guys know of, of multiples of 45 or 30 that gives you 50 degrees? Is there another pair you guys can use? Yo, that's right. So look at this. So it's not so much, would that, would that make 15 degrees as well? Yeah. yeah, so this is not a unique pair. You can do a whole bunch of different things. In fact, what, 150 minus 135? Right? 150 minus 135 would do the exact same trick. Right? It's just a difference of 15 degrees. I'm going to use the top one because that looks like the easiest one. So let's go for it here. So the way we write it is cosine of 15 degrees is the same thing as cosine of 45 degrees minus 30 degrees, which is the same thing as get this form up. guarantee by the time you write this like 10 times on the homework, you'll have it memorized. It will not come out of your memory. That's the, going to be the problem. All right, so give me the values here, because memory, this is exact value, right? I'll pick on people this morning. Can I pick on people this morning here? Like, Grant, did he just perfect here? He gave me the exact value for cosine of 45 degrees. talk about this here. So cosine of 45 degrees according to the table is 1 over root 2. And that's pretty cool. That is works. Um, what we normally like, we like that little positive just number 2 on the bottom. Oh yeah. So, so we rationalize our denominator. And again, which one do we use? This one or this one? Depends. We good? Depends which one you want. They're, they both mean the same thing here. Um, it works a lot better here because when we do this right here, cosine of 30 degrees, Grace? Um, I don't know. I don't have the sign. Gotcha. Okay. Three over two. Okay. Grant saved you. Three over two. Thanks, Grant. That little denominator of two is just so nice because then it's always a denominator of two. We can yeah. go on to that. Matthias, go for sine of 45. Two over two rationalized, right? Mm -hmm. Perfect. And Zachariah, sine of thirty. Uh, one half. One half is perfect. I like those denominator twos. 
done. Here it is. This is going to be root 6 over 4 plus root 2 over 4, which really just means root 6 plus root 2 over 4. <coughs> You'll see root 6 and root 2 a whole bunch in this section. We're good? Okay, this is super duper awesome. We have just figured out an exact value for a degree we had no clue how to get to before today. We're good? So then, in, we're not going to go this direction, but in the Greeks, what they did is they, once they found this out, and they go to. Ah, da -da -da -da. Let's see. Once they know this, then they take 180, and they add 15, right? Because now we know the exact value for this one right here, right? So then you start building, you start building a whole bunch. Because then we can get 195 just by doing the 15 plus the 180 whatever it's trying. And you still use the formula. But then you just create a whole new world of exact values that you can know finally. We good? Wait, so are you saying that 195 is the same as? It's 180 plus another 15. Um, sorry, not as far as like cosine is, but as far as angle measurements are concerned, right? Because um, now you can start adding and building and stuff. And then once we get down to taking half an angle, that's cool. Because half of 15 would then be 7.5. And now we know you can take half of 15, 7.5, which we'll get to in the next section. We have a piece of a degree called 7.5 degrees. Now you can add that 7.5 degrees to 30 degrees, make 37.5 degrees. Are we good? And now we know exact value of cosine of 37.5 degrees based upon what we have here. Okay, I think we'll have to stop for today. We've introduced it, and then Wednesday we'll come back and finish it off.